Hello and welcome to my second Revit tutorial video series. In this tutorial series, I'll show you how to draw a simple portal frame like this. For those of you who don't know what a portal frame is, it is essentially a single story structure, usually constructed of steel, and has these long spans between columns over here. So they are usually ideal for applications such as uh, warehouses, where you need this large space over here and this tutorial series will be divided into four different videos the first video will show you how to draw in the top all surface the slab the columns roof beams and beams and also show you how to go and draw in these levels as well and I'll also show you how to go and use them properly and in the second video of this series I'll show you how to do the steel connections so I'll, I'll show you how to draw in these apex haunches, these uh, roof beam to column haunches and these beam to column connections over here along with the column to slab connection in the third video I'll show you how to draw in a roof along with the Perlin system over here that you can see and the bonus gutter feature over here along with the piping system in the final video I will show you how to draw in bracings like these along with their connections that connect to the columns and without further ado let's get started so before we begin drawing our portal frame we first we first need to go and draw our topo surface and before that we need to draw it draw in our level for that and to see where the levels are located you have to go to the elevation view uh, it is found in the project browser over here on the very left I'll just double click on the east elevation and you can see that these are the level lines I have level 1 and level 0 where level 0 is at 0 meters and level 1 is at 4 meters what I normally like to do is to extend these lines out so that they are not intersecting these uh, grid lines over here these horizontal grid lines by, by the way are easily seen in your uh, plan views so I normally extend it over like this and it's done so now that I've already extended the elevate sorry the the level lines in the east elevation I don't have to extend them in the west elevation because if I click on the west elevation it's already extended so that's how Revit works so if I were to extend the level uh, lines over here in the east elevation it will extend it in the west elevation as well so if I open up the north elevation and south elevation they have not been adjusted so I need to change either in the north or south elevation then it will affect the other one so just remember the east and west elevations they are linked to each other when it comes to the length of this level and the north and the south are linked to each other for the length of the level lines so now that I've already adjusted the lines length now it's time to draw in the new level for the ground level or the topo surface level so you can find the level drawing tool here in the datum subsection of the architecture tab it's in the same subsection as the grid button so left click on the level button once and I'm going to use the pick lines tool and I'll set my topo surface to minus 0 0.1 meters and I'll draw it below level 0 you can see that the naming is kind of blocking level 1 so I'll go and add an elbow please do note that if you edit uh, one of these name names in one view of the elevation you need to do it manually to all the other views because it does not register to the other uh, views so I'm gonna rename level 2 to my ground level and Revit will uh, ask you if you want to change the corresponding view names and I'll click on yes and I'll also add an elbow to level 0 and I'll drag it up 
and there you go so I'll quickly go do the same thing for the others and now that I've already adjusted all the uh, levels and I've already placed the names so that they are not blocking each other now it's time to draw the topo surface now I can draw it from the level 0 view so you can just go back to the level 0 view and I can begin drawing but now to draw a topo surface you need to go to the massing and site tab and under the model site subsection you can find a button called topo surface left click it once and by default you can place topo points so before you go and place topo points it's always a good idea to go and change the elevation to the elevation that you need so I'll change it to minus 0 0.1 and I'll place them all on the corners of my grid lines as you can see you still can't see it because that's the thing about level plans you can't really see your topo surface easily so if I go to the site view plan and change the view range to accommodate for the position of the topo surface I can now see it over here so usually drawing your topo surface is ideal if you are using the side view it's less ideal for le for level views and just better in mind for next time so now we need to draw a slab so we need to go to the structure tab and under the foundation subsection you can find a button called slab and I uh, can click on this button here structural foundation slab and you have many different tools over here but the simplest tool is to use the rectangle tool that I'll be using in this example and before I'm drawing it I will change the constraints or at least check them so I'm gonna ensure that the slab will start at level 0 and has an offset of 0 meters I don't need the slab to be above the set level by a set amount or below it so uh, offset of 0 is used and I'll draw my slab starting from B4 to D2 so it's a 10 by 10 meter slab and I'll click on the finish edit mode and if I go to the 3D view I can see that my slab is already drawn in so it's always a good idea to ensure that the slab is not in the same level as your topo surface so if I were to change this to, lev to ground level you can see that there's a flickering effect uh, this is this is what happens when you have one uh, item that's at the same level in the same position as another so the computer doesn't know what to actually draw out so it's always a good idea to always have it placed above the topo surface so you don't have that flickering effect so now to draw our columns you can just go to the column button in the structure tab and usually you should have one column preloaded for the steel, steel columns but for now I'll show you how to go and uh, upload sorry uh, insert some new ones so I'll go to load family and usually you should have a file called structural columns double click on it and under the steel uh, folder you should be able to find quite a few different types of steel columns I'll choose the British standard and I'll import some UC columns or universal columns I'll choose UC203 by 60 I'll click OK uh, sometimes Revit will ask you to override an existing version uh, in this case I'll override it so that I can access it so now I'll change it to this new column that I've loaded in now before drawing you should always check whether or not you're using depth for height if you're using depth what it means is that if I'm starting my column at level 0 it will draw downwards instead of up so now that I want to draw from level 0 to level 1 I must use height instead of depth so now that I've already chosen height I can begin drawing my columns at these grid intersections and I'm already done with my columns already so now if I go to the 3D view you can see that all the columns are drawn from level 0 
to level 1. Now it's time to draw our beams. So to draw our beams, we need to go back to a plan view. In the same structure tab, you should be able to find a button called beam. So left click it once and usually there's a preloaded beam. I'm going to use the preloaded beam available here. And for the placement plane, I'm going to place it at level 1. And I will draw it from one column to another. So for example, I'll change the uh, detail settings to fine so it's easier for me to draw precisely. And I'll draw from one column to another. And I've already drawn in my beams already. So to reduce the hassle, I'll just copy the beams on the left hand side and paste them to the right hand side. So I'll just, co uh, I'll just copy them by selecting both of them by hitting control and left click. And then I'll go to the modify structural framing tab and click on copy over here. And then I'll pick a point to copy from. I'll pick the middle here. And then I'll drag it over to the right and left click again. I'll have my beam set up. So if I were to go and look in the 3D view, you can see that I've already drawn in my columns already and my beams. Now it's time to draw my roof beams. Now to draw the roof beams, we can just use the same beams that we've used. So I'll just go back to the structure tab and click on beam. And I can just draw two separate beams over here. Then I'll go to my 3D view. And what I can do is I can select these two and then I'll set the end offset the end level offset to 2.89 meters so that I can have a 30 degree roof angle. Now this doesn't look very right as to how they join so I'm going to go to the steel section over here and then I'm going to go to the parametric cuts subsection and I'll choose miter left click it once and I'm going to select these two uh, roof beams by using left click and holding down control at the same time and then pressing enter it will already miter it for you then if I exit the tool it will already draw in the roof beams mitered together like that so it's neat so now if I go back to the side plan view I can copy these two roof beams and paste them el elsewhere and that's about it so by now we have already drawn in our entire portal frame so if I go to the 3D view this is all done already now that we've finished drawing our portal frame this marks the end of video 1 of 4 videos in this portal frame series don't forget to share and like this video and if you want to watch more Revit tutorials subscribe to my channel and until next time thank you for watching and goodbye